The badges feature is used to create a series of repeating designs, such as ID cards, nameplates, and so on. Optionally, replacement text can be automatically substituted for each badge, and in the case of numeric values, including barcodes, the replaced numeric values can be incremented for each badge in the series. For text that has been applied with either special effects or toolpaths, the Instant Replay feature will automatically recalculate all such operations for replaced text. Before we create badges, we will create a multi-line engraving plate that will serve as our template. For this design, there are various elements that need to be machined, such as the overall frame, the graphic, and the title text. However, for this video, we will focus on the engraved plates that will be mounted at the bottom. First, we will set the plate size according to what we need for our initial design so that we can compose the elements that should be common for all badges. From the layout menu, choose Plate Size. In the Plate Size dialog, we set the origin selection to the top left the orientation to landscape, the width at 6 inches, and the height at 2 inches. Set the Resize Objects Proportionally checkbox to Off. As we work through these examples, we will resize the plate size to accommodate different cutting areas, but we do not want to resize our badge design when we do this. Click OK to confirm our settings. Now we can create text by choosing Text Tools Frame Text Compose, which automatically creates a text frame. The dimensions of this text frame will be equal to the current plate size, and the Text Compose settings will appear in the smart bar. Since we are creating text for an engraving job, we want to use an engraving font, which in this case we have chosen the Dino VF font, which is a single line engraving font. In the smart bar, set the text frame properties according to how you need the text to be applied, keeping in mind that you probably want some text compression settings for situations where the replaced text would otherwise exceed the badge dimensions. To give you an example of possible text frame properties to consider, we set the following. For the font height, we set 1 half inch. For the line spacing, we set a relative spacing of 155% of the font height. For justification, we clicked Center Justify. For the line layout, we chose Centered. For the toolbar mode, we chose Frame, which reveals the margin fields. For these two buttons, Fixed Width and Fixed Height, we want both of these on. For the margins, we want them to be percent margins, as opposed to absolute values. Then click the Height Compression Mode button, which opens the Vertical Compression dialog. Click the first option, Compress Text Only When Height Exceeded. From the Method drop list, choose Character Height Compression. Click OK to close the dialog, and now we can create our text. For the initial design, text that we enter here will be a placeholder until text replacement occurs during the badge creation process. As a rule, use meaningful text that describes what each line represents so that we can easily identify what text is being replaced. When ready, we can click OK in the smart bar to finish editing the text object. With the text selected, we can now apply a tool path. But before we do this, confirm that Options menu Use Instant Replay is on. When the badges are created, the text will change according to each name, and Instant Replay will automatically update the toolpath information for each badge. When engraving, there are two methods for defining the cutting depth. For the single line engraving font that we are using, we do not need to apply a toolpath. Instead, you will set the cutting depth at the machine control panel, that is to say, when you are ready to output the job. So for this single line engraving font, no further work needs to be done, and we can proceed with the Badges Setup dialog in the next video. However, instead of a line font, suppose we were using a font that has characters with a thickness. For this thick text, we choose Engrave Menu, Create Toolpath Flyout. 
The choice of toolpath will vary according to the effect that you want to create. An online toolpath will trace the outer contours of the text, whereas a fill toolpath will cut the areas within the body of each text character. So if we choose the fill toolpath, the fill dialog will prompt you to set the choice of tool, the cutting depth, the type of fill style, etc. Without going into further detail about toolpath settings, which are a separate topic, it is sufficient to say that we click OK, which creates a toolpath for this text, which you can see in the layer viewer as its own object. Regardless of whether you will be setting the cutting depth at the machine or creating a toolpath for this text, we are ready to use the badges setup dialog. We will reuse this plate design in subsequent badges videos.